these New York Knicks, and I spoke about it in the lead in, we all know that offensively they had struggled. They had tried to generate points. It really wasn't working for them against the Atlanta Hawks in the playoffs. However, the identity of the team has changed this season, them shooting so many threes. Yeah, they're shooting more threes, and they brought in some guys that can score the ball a lot better. So when you look at guys like Kimball Walker, that's going to give them a lot, a lot more offense as well. So I have to give a big salute to the front office. What yeah. they've done the last two years has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, bringing in Kimball Walker, bringing in Evan Fournier, and they're doing exactly what this team needed. First of all, they identified Tom Thibodeau as we, uh, the coach last year. They said, listen, we got to bring in somebody that can solidify this locker room and set the culture. Once they set the culture and got guys playing defense, they said, okay, the defense is set, but now we got to worry about that other side of the ball because you got to get your offense right. Let's go out there and get a Kimball Walker. We don't need to be the Kimball Walker of old. We just need to give us a little bit of pop. Let's go out there and, and add had some more players out there that can score the basketball. So this Knicks team is now scoring the basketball. Guys are getting better. I like I like how some of the young guys are coming along as well. We talk about guys like Obi Top and some of the other young players on this team. The Knicks now, just like the Bulls, they're for real also. You know, so, you know the other island secret though? What's that? Is that Tibbs has changed a little bit. Yes. There's no longer, let me say it, there's still four hour practices, but it's not three and a half hour beating your legs up. Yes. So now Tibbs has figured out, yes, I'm going to be hard. I'm going to demand you play defense, but we're only going to be on the floor for maybe an hour, hour and a half. But the, at the other two hours, we're going to be in the film room, and your tail's going to be with one of the assistant coaches, and you're going to be watching the mistakes you make during the game so you don't make them again when the next game comes. So that's the part I'm hearing from New York, why the players are still so fresh and playing hard if they're not getting beat up on the practice floor. Talk about that three-point shooting again. 70 made threes through the first four games. They didn't have a stretch like that any time last season. They no shoot way. out there shooting like Dennis Scott. But then you have Julius Randle, an all-NBA performer last year, also the most improved player, putting up similar numbers to what he did last year, 3D, 25, and 11, still showing he's the primary option. And it seems like he's added a couple of things to his bag. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me, B, was so far is he's not selling for the jump shot like he did so much last year. Shot clock's going down. Just settle for the three-point shot or the step-back three that the whole NBA is doing now. So the first couple of games, I see him now putting the ball on the floor, attacking the defense, trying to get to the free throw line. Yes, indeed. You see him out there on the floor right now, ready to ball in Chicago. So, B. Wood, obviously we know you focus on the bigs. Shameless plug, House of Haywood coming up later on in this show. Oh, what, yeah. what, what do you see from Julius Randle that you like so far this season? I just see a guy that's relentless. And when you look at Julius Randle, he's going out there and he's just going to make a shake. He's going to do whatever he has to, whether he has to drive the ball to the basket, whether it's shooting in the mid range. He's always aggressive. Um, he's never gotten rid of that bull in a china shop mentality. And I just love that about him. I love the fact that, yeah, he's getting you to 25, 26 points 3D. Mm -hmm. but it's not just that. He's also going out there giving you 11 rebounds and then 6.5 assists. And that's the, that was the biggest to me, the biggest jump or the big, biggest hurdle for him in his career was, yeah, we knew you could score and rebound, but can you make other players better? And that's, what, that's how you go from being a good player to a great player. Ever since he's come over from the Pelicans, he's made that a part of his game that, okay, I'm going to score the ball. They give me more responsibility. And with that responsibility, I understand that I just can't take all the shots myself. I have to get my teammates involved. I love the other aspects of the game that he's improving on. Speaking of teammates involved, Derrick Rose returning back to Chicago. It's always good to see him back in that building. So far, the New York Knicks, they're getting 41 points per game from their reserves. Of course, D. Rose, one of their mains coming off the bench. I mean, 3D, we all know his story. Obviously, the most decorated player on that roster, looking at what he's become now, what are you seeing? What do you like about his game? The fact that Derrick Rose has been through the injuries, the ups and downs, you know how fast his career got off such a great start. Derrick Rose is actually now a viable three-point shooter, guys. Right. He, he's actually shooting the ball with confidence, shooting it in rhythm, taking good three-point shots. So at this point in his career, to be able to shoot the basketball, knowing that he was a driver, a rim attack, you know, a guy like to attack the rim early in his career. So now being a savvy vet in the locker room, hearing Derrick Rose talk about, I'm talking to the younger guys, how to take care of their bodies and, and do things the right way. So super happy for D. Rose.